CNN article about like the strangest folks in history. Plus, I already knew some strange folks, so I kind of assembled this presentation just for the laughs. So I'm gonna go one by one. Wow. There's a bunch of popes. So the first is Alexander the Sixth, and um, he was a member of the Borgia family, which is a really wealthy uh, family, kind of like the Medici, but they're Spanish instead of Italian. Um, and so when he first went to the papacy in the late 1490s, he bribed it because that's what rich people do. Um, and uh, in when he became pope, he basically used his power to obtain more money by killing off rival cardinals and obtaining their property for himself. And keeping with a good tradition of celibacy in the Catholic faith, he fathered several uh, children, illegitimately of course, with his many mistresses. Um, and I included a contemporary quote that I found. He was gifted with the equality of being a smooth talker and of choice eloquence. Beautiful women were attracted to him and excited by him in a remarkable way, more strongly than how iron is drawn to a magnet. That so, shall be my senior the next, post. <laughs> the next pope is probably my favorite, Stephen VI. Um, he was so <gasps> upset with his predecessor, Formosus, that he put the previous pope's corpse on trial after he died. And I believe he was tried for illegally ascending to the cap papacy. Um, he, some like he kept... Satan. It wasn't that, it was like also a property thing, like once you become yeah. the Pope, you have to give up your old abbeys, but I think he no one really yeah. did. And then, um, he had <laughs> a deacon to answer for the corpse, obviously that's so biased, and so it was no surprise to anyone when Formosus was found guilty, and then the corpse was thrown to the Tiber River, which is that river which runs, th runs through Rome. So about a month later... Formosus' body washes up downstream, and there's local legend that his body has magical powers, like magical healing powers, I don't even know. And um, by then, people were so upset with Stephen's uh, kind of crazy rule that they <coughs> him and then strangled him in the jail cell um, because the trial was largely unpopular, of course. And also because it just made him look flat out crazy. What's wrong with this? Okay. <laughs> All right, so then I have, uh, I don't know how to say this, Boniface the Eighth. I believe that's how you say it. Um, he's known for your, his in-your-face attitude and getting in many <coughs> fights, especially with many of the um, kings and emperors of his day. Um, for example, in his most famous act, when the French king taxed holy sites in his land, um, Boniface issued a papal bull that basically stated that all of Europe was under his command. Even though that was essentially true, most people regarded it as complete BS. Um, and uh, he had many enemies, including the famous uh, poet and author Dante, um, whom he exiled to Florence. And in retaliation, Dante had placed him in the A circle of hell, in his inferno. So, yeah. Just That's press right. the button, it ain't gonna work. That's a little hard. Alright, next pope is Urban VI. Um, his election as pope in 1378 triggered what was called the Western Schism, in which um, they were. Uh, in which a fraction of the cardinals walked off and then elected their own pope. So now you have Urban VI and the other pope. I don't remember his name. And both were competing for power. <coughs> um, and there were times when Urban felt like his power was hanging by a thread. So he used a lot of violence to dispatch any, and many of his enemies. A lot of them were just cardinals that had walked off. Um, so the remaining cardinals quickly realized that he was crazy. And even the cardinals that originally supported him so the rival pope excommunicated him. Um, in retaliation, he only killed some people even more. And legend has it that um, he, he was in this castle when a bunch of rival cardinals were being executed, or first tortured, then executed. And then he complained that their screams when they were dying weren't loud enough. So that's a little crazy. Right. And I have Leo X, who's probably the most famous out of all of these. Um, he was a member of the famous Medici family, which was that rich Italian family I was talking about earlier. Um, he was initially a good pope by funding a bunch of <coughs> works, um, and I think he was indirectly responsible for kickstarting the career of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, I forget if that was him or another pope. But his uh, being rich, his expenses drove church revenues way downward, and also I believe at the time the Medici family was kind of uh, suffering from... Uh, they weren't as wealthy as they were before, so he quickly used his position to try to get more money. And the way that he had done this was by selling indulgences. Basically, the promise <laughs> that you can get out of hell if you pay some large amount of money. 
And um, even though that previous popes had done this before, uh, Leo X took this to a really large scale, and it's pretty obvious to everyone that he was just doing it for the money, like a current leader right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this or may like have caused the Protestant Reformation, too. and then the whole Martin Luther walking out and posting his theses, and yeah. Um, next is John the 18th, right? Oh, John the 12th, John the 12th, excuse me. Um, so he ascended the, to the papacy at age 18, so he was basically a teenager, and being a teenager, with all those hormones, he basically <laughs> turned the Pope's residence into a brothel, which is definitely not something that's... Priorities! <laughs> recommend the Catholic faith, and legend has it that he died doing what he loved with another man's wife, if you know what I mean. And, um... He was deposed by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto I, who replaced him with a very <coughs> complacent and less sexual pope, and by then, Otto was basically doing everyone a favor. <laughs> well, come on. And next I have Benedict the Ninth, and I believe he had ascended to the papacy three times. First was by bribery from his father. Um, that because of his violent behavior, he was expelled from Rome, and then he came back, thanks to his um, father again, and uh, but he sold the papacy to his godfather, and then I believe the godfather <coughs> died, a rival pope came in. Then he came back a third time. Then he was finally chased out by German troops because by this time Germany was basically the watchdog of Italy, and he was described as a demon from hell and so vile, so foul, so execrable that I shudder to think about it by a contemporary person. Uh, next pope is Sergius the third. Um, and in strange pope fashion, he ordered the murder of two of his predecessors after becoming pope. And um, he also fathered an illegitimate son with a <laughs> socialite named Marosia. Love that name. And the son actually became a pope as well, John the Eleventh. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Thankfully, there are not enough popes to drag this on for the entire period. So. All right, we have one question. Yeah. Um, so, like, how many popes are there? Too many. I think there's about 300, at least 300. There's only a small sample. Well, yeah, so the, 